You'd have thought a lot of guys would have common sense when it comes to doing day game and certain things that would be deemed appropriate presentation wise when you're you're stopping women or perhaps just things maybe to bear in mind if you're going to be out and about all day chatting up girls. Um, so this list that I've put together are certainly the essentials that you do want to consider if you want to get the most out of your day game experiences. Um, and uh, believe it or not, with some of these, guys just haven't thought about like, oh yeah, maybe I do need to do this. So so hopefully um, one of these or some of these might resonate with you or maybe you even know a guy who just hasn't followed these instructions. Um, and, uh, and I'll share maybe a fun, funny story or two with this as well. So point number one, if you're going to be going out and doing a lot of street approaching, you've got to dress smartly. Now, funny enough, over the years, I've done filming with coaches and we've done like transformation videos and guys, in fact, even not just transformation videos, but even normal videos as well. And guys have like come out in the most worst dressed look about themselves. Their fashion has been awful. And then when they're doing the approaching, they wonder why like no one's stopping for them. You know, they're like dressed either like, I dare say it, like a homeless person or they're dressing like something from like the 80s, you know, where really old school clothes or clothes that just don't fit them at all. They don't suit their body physique or don't show them off in the best possible light. Or they sh they're wearing clothes that just make them look incredibly like cheapskate or it's dated and, and stuff. So like, if you're going to be approaching women, you've got to be making sure that you are making a great first impression. And that is that you've got to dress smartly. Okay, if you're going to stop people, make sure that you will look presentable, make sure that you look good. And that can even be, you know, making sure that you're like well groomed, like sort your hair out and stuff, um, you know, trim your beard or shave it, you know, just have a little bit of a style to, to you, especially one that maybe suits you as well. But yeah, you'd be amazed at just how many guys they'll go out, they'll do some some approaching and then they wonder why like just they're getting rejected or like no one wants to stop and talk to them. And it's because they are just wearing the most ridiculous clothes. OK, so you've got to wear something that complements you. Next one, though, uh, and even I'm kind of victim of this as well when I've gone out and done like long day game sessions is that you've got to wear comfortable shoes. Now, I know that you'll you'll get coaches that will say like, oh yeah, you've got to wear like really smart shoes and stuff if you're going to go out and doing, doing day game. And to an extent, I do agree. But have you tried walking around all day long in really smart shoes? Your feet ache so much and you'll either get blisters or you'll get like uh i don't know what the the name is for like if you get a pain in the arch of your foot but you can get all sorts of problems with your feet if you're not walking around in appropriate footwear <gasps> I've got the hiccups now. Um, if you're not walking around in appropriate footwear, if you're going to be having long sessions going out to, to practice day game. Um, so I know for me, actually, those uh, that was something that had happened to me where I'd gone out in really smart shoes. And I like, for me, um, especially because of like my work lifestyle, I will every now and again, um, when I do a day game session, I try and book three days aside where I've got no distractions from anything else and I give myself my own little mini boot camp experience and I will do really long days especially the guys that I'm with you know we will go until pretty much everyone is waving that white flag going like oh, I can't do anymore I'm tired let's 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 call it so that's when it's the unanimous vote but point being is that because I will then be walking literally all over London I have to wear trainers I have to wear, it doesn't matter if I'm wearing smart, everything else, I have to wear trainers when I'm going out because otherwise my feet blister like crazy and I am then in so much pain. And I have known that to happen to other men as well who have gone out and then they are essentially spending their next day or two of approaching just like hobbling everywhere or, you know, limping and stuff, you know, then they are in genuinely a lot of pain and it just interferes with their ability to practice. So 
do consider if you're going to do long days uh, and especially if you're thinking about walking around a lot whether it be in London or any other city internationally around the world do wear appropriate footwear that you're going to be comfortable walking around long hours in it's one thing if you're maybe staying in a location or definitely you know if you're running errands or if you're on your way to work or the gym or going shopping for food and stuff or seeing friends and you know you're wearing smart shoes because you're going somewhere and then you see someone obviously absolutely wear really really nice footwear but if you're going out delegating time to approach people yeah you've got to wear decent footwear with that so that that's my rant over with that um the next one as well hilariously is don't drink too much coffee okay um i have known guys uh, in fact, I've got two stories here. Uh, so the first story is that I've known guys who um, they drink too much coffee and then they wondered why they are getting anxious and they feel jittery or they feel nervous when they're talking to women. Um, I once went out uh, approaching with a guy and he, uh, I kid you not, when we had our, our sort of like coffee break, I remember he was sitting there having his coffee and he was shaking like this. And he, and he was drinking. He was like, I don't know why I'm so nervous. You know, and I said to him, like, I said, maybe how many coffees have you had today? That's just the one, right? He was like, no, 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 it's my fourth. I was like, that's your fourth coffee. No wonder you are like really anxious and jittery. You've got to stop. So just just limit if you're if you're someone who's really anxious. Um, just limit the amount of coffee that you're having in fact maybe even not have a coffee try and wean yourself off of it that certainly adds to a guy's anxiety uh, especially in those moments where he is really nervous um, but the other point is don't have too many um, coffees because it can turn into a laxative as well um, I once also did approach him with another guy and it was literally just the one time as well unfortunately <laughs> fortunately it wasn't a long session either but the guy had tried to like hype himself up uh before doing street approaching with me and he'd had a few coffees and he was sort of complaining about like he was feeling bloated and, and all this and that and then he didn't approach and then the there was that moment where like the the woman she crossed their legs she was enjoying the interaction and then suddenly his smile on his face i could see in the distance just sunk to like being mortified like his eyes went like really really wide was like, uh-huh uh-huh and it, as he was looking to her and then he crossed his legs and i didn't quite understand what was going on there i thought you know because i i could hear from in the distance uh with my headphones on and i thought like oh she hasn't said anything that you know that's been offending him or offensive to him i wonder what's happened um and then i think he very quickly <laughs> ended the interaction and then I remember he was walking back over to me, clenching his bum cheeks and like like putting his hands like like trying to push his bum cheeks together. He was like, "I gotta find the toilet. I gotta find the toilet." And um and then he he went to the toilet and I just and he was like, "Yeah, I got the shits." I was like, "Oh, okay. Do you wanna? Should we end the session?" Then he was like, "Yeah, I think we're gonna have to. I think we're gonna have to." Didn't work. Didn't go out with him again after that. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> However much of a funny story it was, but he was a it was a bit of a strange guy to be fair. <clears throat> but um, yeah, just take uh, or heed my advice on this. Is like don't overdrink coffees because one, it will make you anxious, and two, it will turn into a laxative. And the last thing you want to have happen, whether it be approaching on the street where you're not near a toilet, or if you get yourself on like an instant date or a date with a with a woman that you've stopped. Yeah, you really don't want to be in that certain circumstance where you're having to deal with uh, that issue as well. So limit your coffees. Um, next one is to take regular breaks. So um, a lot of guys, when they go out, they kind of forget to, to take regular breaks when they're approaching. Um, you know, if you're talking to a lot of people, there's a lot of mental exercise that is going on there, as well as the amount of walking around that you're probably doing. I think whenever I've gone out filming with clients, I mean, we've done like a marathon uh, of a length of a walk uh, and that's usually been in like six, eight hours. So you have to bear in mind that you are doing a workout when you are going out and doing approaching, whether again, physically or mentally, but you are doing a workout and you have to take regular breaks just to allow your body to relax, recuperate its energy, 
Um, maybe even having like food and drink and stuff just to kind of even give your body that bit more fuel again. Um, and then you can carry on going. Now, I remember once I was working with a client and then, uh, and it was for his channel. And then he had a client that I was then filming just one-on-one with. And he was stopping girls, absolutely no problem. But very, very quickly, he was just hitting a brick wall. It was very obvious that he was struggling. And um, he was then going into interactions or he was going into approaches just with no energy at all. Uh, And he was just like, literally was sort of stopping the girl. He managed to have enough energy to stop her. And then that was it. It was like watching like a balloon just deflate. And, uh, you know, and then the women were walking away. And I said to him, like, like, when was the last time you ate? He said, oh, I haven't eaten since like like 11 o'clock. I was like, but it's six o'clock now. So you haven't had any lunch or anything like that, right? Let's get some food and then we'll carry on. So went to prep, grabbed a sandwich, he ate. And point being is like about 10, 15 minutes later, suddenly he had the energy to go again for another hour, two hours of filming. And then we got some really good content. So when you're going out, bear in mind to take regular breaks, you know, every couple of hours, absolutely fine. Again, avoid having a coffee uh, during each break. Um, I'd only probably have that in the morning, Um, but just go out, have a couple of hours of approaching, have a quick break, have some water, have some food, maybe take like a protein bar or something with you. Um, Absolutely fine. In fact, that's what I do. And, um, And then carry on afterwards. Just give yourself that bit more energy, that fuel to be able to carry on. And you'll find that you'll get them really good results or not. No, that's not fair to say. You won't get really good results, but you will have the energy to be able to manage the different conversations that you'll have throughout the day rather than hitting that burnout phase and for my last point you need to stop approaching when your body hits fatigue when it tells you enough is enough but the best way to gauge that so you know if whether or not it's just your body just trying to get out of doing more approaches is by having those regular breaks because then you'll know if your body has hit that fatigue level where it's just exhausted it can't do any more or if it's the case that you just needed a break just to refuel and give you more energy to be able to carry on. And in fact, I mentioned in one of my other videos with the comfort zones that when you hit that stress zone, if you push too much into it, you're going to get that rubber band effect. And that's the last thing you want to have happen, especially if you have had a really, really good session. So when you do hit that fatigue whether it be after a couple of hours or maybe like after like eight, nine, 10, if you've done a full day, you know, just respect your body telling you that enough's enough. You've done all you possibly can today. And it will vary from day to day as well. You might have a day where you will only be able to go out for an hour or two and then might have another day where you can go out literally for for the entire time that the sun's out it can it can really really vary and it can also depend on what mood you're in as well and also if you've got other stuff on your mind to be uh concerning yourself with like work or gym or something so just respect the fact that yet yeah, your body might get to a point that it might be tired but it's just a great way to also just test do you need a break or are you really really done if you're really really done end it, end your time on a high, you know, because then you can also take away the positive experience of you doing approaching rather than remembering the times that you were just really burnt out, tired, couldn't be bothered, etc. So those are my five mindsets or not mindsets, but those are my five most important things that I want you to consider. If you really, really want to get the most out of your day game sessions, then um, I do highly suggest that you take these on board. You try and incorporate them into your life uh, or into your day game sessions. Uh, And perhaps as well, maybe there's someone that you know that you need to recommend them to make those changes to their... uh, their way of doing their sessions as well or to their experiences. Maybe they are just overdoing it with the approaches or maybe they, well, maybe they are just uh, going out with the worst sort of dress sense and, and stuff as well or they are complaining about how their feet are hurting them and they're limping around, you know, like they've been walking on uh, on coal stone. So hopefully you take a lot from this video. If you can, like and subscribe 
Uh, if you are struggling to go out and do your day game approaches and you need someone to hold you accountable, especially if maybe you are thinking of working with a dating coach or you have worked with a dating coach, then I am a life coach and I can help people particularly in this field of day game and street approaching, uh, because I have spent 15 years working in the dating industry, um, I can help you with making sure that you reach the results that you are looking for. And also because of my eye movement therapy stuff, I can help to remove those uh, boundaries, those sticking points that are stopping you from uh, moving forward and getting the results that you do want to get as well. So thanks for watching and uh, Check out my uh, my website below for more info on my stuff. And I look forward to also hearing from you in uh, what did you do to make changes to your day game experiences?